On this episode of InCycle, we're in Italy at the Giro d'Italia. We had to spend energy yesterday. The, the first day, actually, we had to spend more because of having the jersey. But it was still in control. And yeah, to keep the jersey yesterday, we should have spent a lot more. Mitchelton Scott's Jessica Allen on the importance of her role as domestique. Yeah, it feels great when people recognise the work I'm doing as a domestique for the teammate. People that just look re at results on paper, it really doesn't show what happens in the race. But before that, we look at the Giro's ever-increasing popularity. The Giro d'Italia, 102 years of cycling history. For many, the Giro is seen as an event that plays second fiddle to the highly prestigious Tour de France. But in recent years, the Tour of Italy has become more and more popular with international riders and fans. InCycle travelled to the Giro to find out what's behind its renewed popularity on the calendar. The Giro d'Italia is my favourite Grand Tour because I think Italy is the perfect place for it. The towns are generally built on hills. That's great for bike racing. Um, it's an incredibly varied country, Italy. You know, it's such a, a young country and you still see huge variation from region to region. And as the race tends to move north, it's kind of like a, a cocktail that hasn't been stirred yet. There are different layers of Italy. And as you progress through those different layers, you, you discover a different world. And I think that's unique in the major tours. Io credo che il, sono italiano, forse sarò di parte, però ripeto, parlo anche da, da, da atleta, da corridore, ho corso sia al giro otto volte, al tour quattro volte, il giro è più frizzante, è più meno eh, calcolato. I mean, I've done all three, obviously the tour gets the most hype, but I think when it comes to the courses and the hardest one, I think it's the giro. The Italians, they love, you know, the Giro, they love the sport, and you feel the passion on the side of the roads. When you're going up to climbs, you have thousands of people, and it keeps you going, and I love that. Italia per me è una corsa fantastica. Unisce l'Italia. Il mio corridore favorito è Vincenzo Nibali. Io credo che tutti vedete proprio il Giro d'Italia ha un aroma ha un profumo a ciclismo, ha un sentimento che la gente rispetta, e fa, si fa rispettare, vive il ciclismo e la gente vive in rosa, sa che il giro pertenece agli italiani e credo che tutti i corridori vogliono correre in Italia perché questo profumo lo fanno, si fa sentire. Eh, quello fa, è un po' il contributo che dà il tempo anche all'imprevedibilità perché il mese di maggio negli ultimi anni è stato veramente molto variabile con situazioni simili invernali e altre di caldo estivo, quindi questo sicuramente acquisce anche la, la, cioè, favorisce la possibilità che ci siano sorprese. The Giro is special because it's so unpredictable. You can never tell what's going to happen on any day, any moment. It's always something that kind of changes at the drop of a hat, you know, like there've been stages to, even this year which we thought were going to be pretty boring. Then with five kilometers to go, suddenly everything kind of got turned upside down. And for some reason, this doesn't seem to happen in the Tour or even in the Vuelta. It's just not as controlled. It's not as, uh, it's, it's, it's got that kind of weird sort of internal dynamic that really makes it something very special. No, diciamo che il Giro d'Italia in certi particolari è molto meglio. La fortuna del Giro d'Italia, no, volevo dire del Tour de France, è la data. Che questo, noi, il Giro d'Italia è fatto mentre i bambini vanno ancora a scuola, i genitori vanno a lavorare, i nonni, i, nonni, i nonni sono lì ma non è che riempiono le strade. La fortuna del tour è la data, che sono tutti in vacanza, ma come percorsi, ma veramente non lo dico perché sono, sono italiano, eh. uh, come percorso, come panorami, in Italia non so se il tour ci batte, io penso di no, ma la fortuna del tour è la data. I think people underestimate the difficulty of the Giro because one, the weather in May, we can be riding in five degrees one day and 30 degrees the next. The stages are longer and there's harder and longer climbs than any race on the calendar. So I think as a package, it's it's the hardest race. There's a lot of pressure in Tour de France, 
um, because, you know, it's meant to be the biggest bike race there is. And I think that steals the actual, the, the, the rider's feel for the racing. Where here we, we enjoy racing, we want to race, and we race with a bit more passion in that sense. If you speak to the riders, the majority of, of them, in my opinion, loves more the Giro than the Tour, because the Giro has conserved so far uh, a more human atmosphere, you know? Uh, the Tour, I guess, uh, is beautiful also, but sometimes uh, for the attention, for the media, for all the structures, has become too big. The Giro is really such a strong, such an important race, but still with the human dimension. Not many teams have enjoyed the success Mitchelton Scott's women have over recent years, but much of that simply wouldn't have been possible without Jess Allen. The 26-year-old Australian has established herself as an elite domestique since joining the squad midway through 2016, helping the likes of Annemiek van Vleuten to numerous wins. Yeah, it feels great when people recognise the work I'm doing as a domestique for the teammates. Um, people that just look re at results on paper, it really doesn't show what happens in the race. Um, so when people recognise the work I'm doing, it, it really means a lot to me because I put a lot of hard work into it. And my teammates particularly, like after every race, they'll always thank me for the work I'm doing and, and that means a lot to me. It is a huge step up, particularly from juniors to seniors. I was a very successful junior, winning the Junior World Time Trial in 2011. And it took a few years to actually step into the senior ranks and get a ride for a team like Mitchelton Scott. So yeah, it is hard to step into that field, but luckily for me, my skills um, and positioning in the peloton of 200 riders is, uh, is quite good and probably my biggest strength. And I think for domestiques, being able to position well is, is super important. The Mitchelton Scott team, they're not worried about the solo breakaway. Jessica Allen is protecting Amanda Spratt at the front of the field. You have to be aggressive. You have to use your elbows and there is a lot of yelling and screaming and you've got to pick your moment perfectly as well. I say to myself, if I'm not moving up, I'm moving back. Um, so as soon as you're just sitting in the bunch, freewheeling, you're going backwards. So you have to be fighting all day. Um, and it kind of feels like a washing machine effect in a way, actually, when you try and explain it to people. You can be 20th wheel and if you switch off for 10 seconds, you can be 100th wheel. So it's just, yeah, like this a lot of the time. and. You just have to be fighting either on the side, through the middle, and, and taking every gap you can see. I find your personality on the bike in races is, is quite different, actually, to off the bike. Um, yeah, you've got to be aggressive, and sometimes you think you, people think you're a for pushing through, but yeah, you, you got to, like, we respect all the riders, um, but it is, yeah, it is aggressive style of racing, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, working with Anna Meek, it's been a huge step forward in my career. I've learned a lot from her, not just on the bike, but off the bike, things like nutrition. And also I think Anna Meek's just her resilience and she's had a lot of comebacks from injuries and um, how she's come back and come back stronger every time as well, I think is super motivational and she's just so great to have as a teammate. Annemiek van Vleuten from Mitchelton Scott, fourth place last weekend in very different circumstances over the cobbles of Belgium. She goes three places better, takes the win, she can't believe it. Wonderful scenes, Annemiek van Vleuten wins Stradivianchi for the first time in her career. And that is a very, very special ride. Stradivianchi this year has been the most special race so far for me. Uh, it was the first time I've actually raced Stradivianchi and I love ra racing on the dirt and technical races like that, so I was really looking forward to it. Um, I did a lot of work for her positioning into the dirt sections, and uh, once my job was done, I was just basically trying to get to the finish line as fast as possible because I knew she was in a breakaway and, and wanted to see if she won or not. And going up the final climb, I was just yelling out to the crowd, who won, who won? And, and they said Annemiek, and it felt so special.
I knew from pretty early on that I wanted to do something in cycling um, and make it to the Olympic Games was the ultimate goal to start with. I didn't really know so much about things like the Tour of Flanders and the Giro, but as I got older and once I started coming to Europe, these races I think are actually more special. Um, just the atmosphere around these races, like to win Tour of Flanders or the Giro, it's such an iconic race and so well known in Europe. And to be riding along riders like Annemiek and Amanda Spratt, it's, it's super special and we're racing with the best girls in the world and I think this team is the best team in the world and I'm really happy here and, and really, really fortunate to be on this team. For me, being a domestique, it's getting me stronger and I know when yeah, I'm strong enough to win these races and put my hand up to win them, the team will support me, but until then I'm happy to keep working for my team and if that's all I do my whole career, then I'm really happy with that because I love that job. Grey skies and wet conditions greeted the riders as they gathered in Frascati for stage five. Tom Dumoulin bravely attempted to continue his Giro after the Dutchman crashed on stage four. But 1.4 kilometers after the neutralized zone, he abandoned. An early break formed, including some web rider Louis Ferfaka, who looked to be riding aggressively in Dumoulin's honor. The break was always within the peloton's grasp, and Ferfaka was caught with 23 kilometers to go. Due to the continuing adverse weather conditions, times for the general classification would be taken on the first passage through the finish line in Terracina. The sprinters were left to battle it out over the surface water to take the stage. Gaviria it is, Gaviria, Gaviria for the UAE. The UAE squad with Pascal Ackerman. Gaviria with Ackerman, Ackerman is not going to be denied. Pascal Ackerman gets the victory on stage five and he timed that to absolute perfection. The German champ demonstrating his strength once again for his second win. For somewhere though, it was all about the loss of their leader. The whole team was a bit disappointed yesterday to see him uh, to see him in such a bad shape, and then this morning was pretty clear already that it would be a hard case for Tom to finish the stage. And then uh, I heard that he stopped the race, and then I said, "Yeah, come, uh, we, we we try and we attack." The motivation of the team now is try to win the stage. Yeah. Primoz Roglic suffered a crash early on on stage six, with signs of the fall on show. Whilst the Slovenian's Jumbo Visma team protected the Maglia Rosa, a 13-man attack was allowed to stay away. On the last climb, two Italians took centre stage, with Fausto Masnada and Valerio Conti attacking with 28 Ks left. And, uh, so Conti, highest on general classification, a minute and 59 down on the pink jersey. He's picked his moment and he's gone with Masnada. Despite some distractions, UAE Team Emirates were on track to take the Maglia Rosa with Conti, whilst Masnada was hunting the stage victory for Androni Giocattoli. That man in pink is not going to be wearing pink on stage seven the way things are currently working out. Masnada looks over his shoulder. He won't be denied. He's made this attack. He's made this one work. And he is now a stage victor in Giro d'Italia. Roglic rolled over 7.19 back, handing pink to Conti, at least for now. We had to spend energy yesterday. The, the first day, actually, we had to spend more because of having the jersey. But it was still in control, and yeah, to keep the jersey yesterday, we should have spent a lot more, and that was uh, our decision to, to not do that. 
preparazione, soprattutto uh, dobbiamo sapere che abbiamo preso una maglia rossa, dobbiamo proprio essere contenti, siamo contenti e andiamo giorno a giorno, no, non ci preoccupiamo solo in, nell'oggi. A frantic start to the race did not let up throughout, making for an exciting and chaotic stage. Moves were made early on, and with Fernando Gaviria abandoning with a sore knee, it was left to the remaining UAE riders to chase the brakes and protect the pink jersey. With efforts from Bahrain Merida and Trek Segafredo, pressure was put on the brake, narrowing it down to only five riders. With one and a half kilometers remaining, it was Peyo Bilbao to make the decisive move. Out of the saddle, inside the final 300 meters, the flags wave to herald the arrival of the riders in Giro d'Italia. It's a victory for Peo Bilbao. The Spaniard winning Astana's 26th victory of the season. Meanwhile, the Maglia Rosa stayed with Valerio Conti. Stage 8 started with changeable conditions as the riders set off from Tortoreto Lido to Pesaro. Very much carded as a sprinter stage, Lotto Sudal worked tirelessly to ensure a bunch sprint would ensue for their star man from Australia, Caleb Ewan. Looks like Ackerman is in prime position. Will Caleb Ewan try and go up the inside of Ackerman? He's not going to be able to do it. Through the final right-hander. Adjustments made on the front that can't have sent it. Ackerman is going to get to go. With 200 metres remaining, Pascal Ackerman launches as Caleb Ewan tries to come round him. Viviani is there as well. Here comes Caleb Ewan. Caleb Ewan through to the line. Ewan gets the victory that Lotto Sudal so craved on the front all day. And the Australian Caleb Ewan has taken victory on stage eight. It's always the goal to, to have a stage win for the team uh, itself in every Grand Tour. So uh, now we are day eight and we have finally uh, the, the victory. So we can uh, be a bit more relaxed the next days. But uh, we, we still will try to get the second victory. The individual time trial on stage nine saw the riders take on a 34.8 kilometer course with an uphill finish. Victor Cabanat was the first of the big guns out of the gates. The hour record holder looking impressive before needing to make an untimely bike change further up the climb. That's not scheduled. Yeah. That is an absolute abomination of a bike change there there is that that's panic look that's absolute panic Vincenzo Nibali set off in the pouring rain in the hope of shaking up the battle for GC whilst being cheered on by the home crowd meanwhile in the absence of Tom Dumoulin it was fellow Dutchman Balko Mollema who looked strong Simon Yates had the chance to rectify his time trial from stage one, but didn't shine in unfavorable conditions, losing 10 seconds to Nibali on the second time check. <laughs> Former Maglia Rosa wearer Primoz Roglic was hot favorite and was set to deliver, being one of only two men to break the 40 km per hour barrier, along with Mollema. Campanart set the pace despite his bike change, coming in with a time of 52 minutes, three seconds. Mollema's impressive ride couldn't quite break that, crossing the line at 52 52. Nibali it is, crosses the line 52 57 inside a minute back. Simon Yates, yeah, a disappointing day in the time trial for him, but it's all over, at least he can uh, put it behind him. Nibali firmly staying in the hunt for GC, while Yates' time did even more damage to his chances. Meanwhile, Valerio Conti was fighting to stay in pink. Remember, he has five minutes and 24 seconds to play with on Primoz Roglic, who started the day 12th overall. 
He's going to do it. Primoz Roglic is going to take it. And I think this is the stage victory for Primoz Roglic. Got almost two minutes in hand. He's got a decent advantage still in the pink jersey competition. Valeria Conti remains the overall race leader of Giro d'Italia. Conti still in the Maglia Rosa, but GC contender Roglic dramatically reduced the gap and sits three minutes, 46 seconds ahead of Simon Yates and 1.44 ahead of closest rival Vincenzo Nibali going into the first rest day. Ma la settimana che si avvicina, uh, vabbè, speriamo arrivi il sole intanto e poi eh, sai, abbiamo giovedì la vera prima salita lunga anche se l'arrivo poi sarà un po' lontano dalla salita e l'ultima settimana che è durissima e quindi uh, per noi è positivo nel senso che essere comunque agganciati a poco distacco, poco distacco a un minuto e mezzo, un minuto e venti da Roglic ci dà la possibilità di sperare insomma, per la classifica finale. That's all for now, but do join us next time. Until then, keep up to date with us on social media.